let's turn to Kyle. Whoops, wrong one. There we go, this one, there we go. All right, so there's Kyle. So Kyle is commenting on the killing of Soleimani, and the reason I'm using this is both it is a reflection of how the left thinks about these things, or how many people, by the way, uh, people like Ron Paul, certain people within the libertarian movement, will agree with everything you'll hear Kyle say. So uh, there, is a, uh, there is a wide array of Americans who, who think uh, this way about politics. That is basically the idea that America is always wrong, America is always bad, particularly when the president happens to be in a party that you don't agree with. The libertarians tend to be a little bit more consistent in their anti-Americanism than even the left. But uh, Kyle is commenting on assassination on Soleimani. And I've talked about Soleimani. I've talked about who he was, how bad he was, how incompetent he was, how the extent to which he supported and the, and the National Guard, the, the Iraqi, um, the Russian uh, uh, Revolutionary Guard, supported the regime, uh, helped oppress the protesters. This, is, this was the regime's arm of oppression and of suppression. Now note, the left's attitude, and again, the certain libertarians who agree with them, towards Soleimani and Iraq, and Iran. And hopefully you can hear this. Donald Trump decided to assassinate a top Iranian general with a drone. Um, we also have... Well, it's assassinate, um, and it's rather than kill, uh, as it would be in a war. You don't assassinate people in a war. You kill them, and uh, because, of course... Kyle, like almost everybody in the United States, doesn't recognize that we are at war with Iran, whether we like it or whether we acknowledge it or not. And, uh, you know, notice how he calls him, a general. Uh, just, just a military guy, no big deal. Just a, just a military, Iranian military general, N nothing special. An Iraqi military leader who was killed as well. He was the head of, I believe, the Popular Mobilization Forces. Yeah, military leader now, in Iraq. No, no the deal. Iranian general... No, not, not, a, not a terrorist organization, not an organization that's killed Americans, not an organization that's responsible for, for, for murder and slaughter of Iraqis and Americans and, and uh, you know, that is irrelevant. Let's, let's... Oops. Tim Soleimani, he was the head of what's called the Quds Force. So, you know... This guy has an interesting backstory, yeah, and this. the more you learn about him, the more you realize that what Trump did here is just totally unconscionable. Yeah, this guy was a silly money, according to Kyle Kalinsky, was a good guy. He was one of the good guys in Iran. Listen. So this guy first rose to prominence when he fought against Saddam Hussein in the Iran-Iraq War, um, and then since then... He's been in charge of providing military assistance uh, to Lebanon. He's been in charge of giving military assistance to Lebanon. Now, I wonder what the Lebanese think about this. Provide, I mean, the dishonesty here. Kyle, I mean, if you watch interviews of Kyle with like Joe Rogan and stuff, he comes across as if he's this objective, rational, takes into account all these different arguments, very level-headed guy, not too radical, not too crazy. He provides military assistance to Lebanon? No, Kyle. He provides military assistance to Hezbollah, a Shiite militia terrorist organization within Lebanon that is not only responsible for the murder of 244 Marines, responsible for the murder and kidnapping of dozens of Americans, responsible for complete mayhem in Lebanon, responsible for holding hostage the entire Lebanese state, even though Shiites, whom Hezbollah represents within Lebanon, are a minority within Lebanon, as is every one of the religions. They are not a majority, and yet they control because of their military force. These are anti-democratic, Democratic, something that Kyle and his leftist friends worship, democracy. These are anti-democratic. Talk about murderers, thugs, who would like to impose a theocracy based on Sharia law, based on 
the Iranian model in Lebanon. The Lebanese hate them, anybody who's not a Shiite associated with a militia at least. I'm not even going to talk about what they've done to Israel and, and the, 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 the terrorism, the, the, the attacks on Israel. Put that aside, just what they've done to Lebanon. Um, no, no, the Soleimani guy, he's a good guy because he, he's helped the Lebanese. He's provided assistance to the Lebanese. Assistance to the most militant, to the most violent, to the most horrific militia within Lebanon that has caused thousands and thousands of deaths. And again, 244 Marines died in Lebanon in 1983 from a bombing by Hezbollah, financed and motivated by the Quds Brigade, the exact brigade that Soleimani is in charge of today. He was a little too young to be responsible for that. But that's who the Quds Brigade is, that he, Kyle, so admires. They provided military assistance to Lebanon. It, it's just, it, it truly is mind-boggling, the dishonesty, and I've been documenting now. You saw, I, I did the Prager University with, with uh, uh, Greg and Anka, the, the dishonesty there, the dishonesty on the left. I mean, all these, all these people. I mean, today, I guess you get 775, 6,000 subscribers by basically lying or not doing your research. Maybe he's just ignorant. Maybe he's just ignorant, but that's even worse. Because why is he talking about a subject he knows nothing about? But to make Soleimani a good guy is so disgusting. Even Iranians know this guy was a bad guy. And Syria. It, military assistance to Syria. No. Right. So Soleimani provided military assistance to the Assad regime. Assad is a brutal dictator who is responsible for the death of tens, if not hundreds of thousands of his own citizens. <laughs> responsible for using chemical weapons and other weapons to kill, murder his own people. The uprising against him was an uprising, at least initially, a people against a dictator. Now, maybe they were no better, you could argue. But suddenly, Assad is pure evil. And the people rising up against him, at least some of them, were much better than Assad. And yet, he presented as, oh no, Soleimani was giving to Syria, not to Assad, to Syria, no. He wasn't giving assistance to Syria. If you wanted to give assistance to Syria, you would guarantee the removal of Assad. You would get rid of Assad. Both Soleimani, Iran, and the Russians have assisted Assad against their own people, against the Syrian people. In establishing and giving permanence to one of the most brutal regimes there are, and permanence to the oppression of the Syrian people. So, again, facts, context, But anything, anything, anything to make the American government bad, anything to present the American government, particularly one run by Trump, as evil and bad and destructive. To the point, you make the good guys, you, you make the real evil guys appear to be the good guys. All right, I have to ask, are you guys, can you guys hear me? Is, is this crashed or hasn't crashed? I, I'm getting mixed signals from my own monitoring here. I'm asking both for Facebook and for uh, YouTube. Somebody on the chats, just tell me. All right, I'm not getting any response, so maybe you're gone. Are you, is anybody there? All right. You're right. Okay, good. All right, let's keep going here. So, yeah, I mean, Soleimani was evil. What he did was evil. You can disagree with American foreign policy. You can think all the troops should come home. But not to call this guy what he is. Not to recognize his own evil. I mean, Kyle and Ron Paul are the same. Their primary focus is anti-American. 
The primary focus is anti-American. Nobody else is as bad as America. Nobody else is as evil as Trump. Now, as you know, I think Trump's damn bad. But Trump is no Ayatollahs in Iran. Trump is no Soleimani. So, and America is not Iran. But, wow. They hate America so, so much. So, his most recent claim to fame is, first of all, um, allying with the Kurds, which is really important, to fight ISIS and Al-Qaeda. The Kurds are terrified of this guy, although because the Shiites are in southern Iraq and the Kurds are in northern Iraq, uh, the Kurds are more terrified of the Sunnis than they are of the Shiites. Um, but the idea, yes, he did ally with them to fight ISIS, and he did succeed and was one of his few successes, together with the Americans, together with lots of other forces, together with the Syrian regime, fighting ISIS. But, all right, for a moment there, for a moment there, he was on the same wavelength. He was an ally, quote, of the United States. At the same time, he was killing Americans. At the same time, killing Americans at every opportunity. By jihadists that were taking over Syria. Um, and he also aligned with the Iraqi government as well to do this. So there was like a united front against the worst forces of ISIS. Yeah, the Iraqi government, because the Iraqi government was basically a puppet government, a puppet of Iran. It was a shared government basically installed. Even the Iraqis demonstrating recently were demonstrating against Iranian influence in their own country because they, the Iraqis, know that they become a puppet government of Iran and they're opposed to that. And again, it's just no context. No context. I mean, this guy comes out as a as a freaking hero, saving Western civilization from ISIS. And, you know, quite frankly, he was one of the leaders in the fight to defeat ISIS, and he succeeded in defeating ISIS. And, you know, all of the... So, so Khan gets that ISIS is bad, but the Shia regime, which Soleimani represents in Iraq, is exactly the same as ISIS. There was no fundamental difference between it. It's mildly more civilized but still committed to Sharia law and over the entire world, still committed to the spread of Islam through the entire world, still committed to world domination of Islam. But everybody knows you're supposed to hate ISIS. But the Shiites, Iran, no, we love them. I mean, the left has been enamored with the Iranian revolution from the beginning, partially because Ayatollah Khomeini strategically used Marxist terminology w during the revolution, during the leading up to the 1979 Iranian revolution and during the revolution in order to get the alliance with the left. So the left supported Khomeini within Iran during the revolution and in the first few months of the revolution. Then once Khomeini established control, dominated the country, had what he wanted, he turned around and basically slaughtered, killed all of the leftists who had supported him. And, but international leftists, from French socialists and egalitarians, they loved the Iranian revolution. It was a revolution against the man. It was a revolution against America. It was a revolution against the Shah. They support, it was a people's revolution. And if, if, if you go back at Foucault and all these postmodernists, they loved the Iranian Revolution. They thought it was a huge advancement. They, they saw it through a Marxist kind of lens of a people rising up to establish a true dictatorship of the masses. A religious one, by the way. But <laughs> anyway, Kyle obviously thinks one form of Islam is better than the other. Sunnis are bad, Shiites good, you know. Unbelievable. Relevant information about this guy is that he was kind of viewed by Iranians as like an apolitical figure. Untrue, completely. He's completely affiliated with the regime. He is uh, intimately associated with Khamenei, the, the supreme leader. There's nothing apolitical about him. He was a supporter. When 
He wrote, and you can find this. It's in Wikipedia, you idiot. He wrote to the regime, you've got to crush these rebellions when the students marched in 2009. He has repeatedly advocated for the worst of the regime, for the worst kind of uh, uh, um, actions by the regime. There's not an ounce, not a shred of non, you know, non-partisanship about Soleimani. He was not involved in the domestic repression at home. Again, just a plain lie. He headed, he headed the, you know, the Islamic Republican God. He headed the arm of the regime. He headed the military arm of the mullahs. Everything about him was about sustaining the oppressive regime that exists in Iran today. Everything. So this is just plain dis misinformation. Talk about fake news. So you can blame, you know, the Ayatollah. There's uh, plenty of blame to go around, but generally speaking, even though he was in the, uh, the um, Islamic Revolutionary Guard... Yeah, it's called the Islamic Revolutionary Guard for a reason. Um, he wasn't viewed as, like, part and parcel or partaking in the domestic re repression at home. And, wasn't viewed you know, according who? to some, he was next in line to, to be the Ayatollah. No, he wasn't. he wasn't. He was never next in line to be the Ayatollah. The Ayatollah is a religious figure, not a military figure. He was next in line. The rumors were he, he, he had a, a number of times been encouraged to run for president. President is very different than uh, supreme leader, than the Ayatollah. Come on, Kyle, do a little bit of research. This is not hard. This is all publicly available information. You can get it on Google. You can get it from the New York Times. This is not hidden stuff. Ah, it's so frustrating to see these idiots, dishonest idiots. Um, but yeah, Kyle, this is not rocket science. You, you should be able to get this right. He was going to run for president. He kept denying, rejecting running for president, staying with the military, staying as the sword of the regime. And you he defeated a, ISIS, and that's his claim to fame. You think this was a reformist? You think this was some peace-loving reformist? He assassinated him. Now, I just need everybody to understand that this is a dude who... Dude, he's a dude. Soleimani, blood of tens of thousands of people. Syrians, Lebanese, Iraqis, and Americans on his hand. And, and by the way, Yemenis and Saudi Arabians on his hands. He's a dude. He's a dude. I mean, it's so disgusting. We were just allies with. So it wasn't like, you know... While yeah, we, we were trying to take on ISIS, by the way, after Absolutely. we armed them and funded them, various jihadist groups. Yeah, you, you don't know much um, there either, Kyle. It wasn't like we didn't work with this guy. No, we did. We did. He was the front line on, on the ground along with the Kurds. So he was just our ally. And I'm going to get to a stunning fact later about the situation in which he was assassinated, what he was doing at the time, which is going to absolutely blow your mind. So the Trump administration says, well, well, we had to do it. I had to do it because he was about to attack us. Now that, you know, Trump administration should is have Is there any said truth that. to that? The answer is no. <laughs> well, how do you know that, Kyle? The answer is no. This guy's attacked Americans on various occasions. On various occasions. So, really? Tell you otherwise is absolutely full of it. How do you know? There's zero evidence to support that assertion. The evidence that he's killed Americans and fought against Americans and has targeted Americans in the past should not suggest that he might be scheming for the future. I'm not saying the intelligence existed, but to unequivocally say what he's saying is just false. Um, and as a general rule, there are no like Shia terror attacks. Oh my God. Oh my God. No Shia terror attacks. 
244 Marines in their barracks in 1983. The Cobalt Tower in Saudi Arabia. I don't have the date, maybe 1994. The, the many, many, many Shiite terrorist attacks during the Iraq War. Hezbollah, terrorist attack after terrorist attack, car bombing after car bombing. All Shiites. What are you talking about? No Shia terrorist attacks? <sighs> against the U.S. They come Again, Cobalt Towers of Saudi Arabia was against the U.S. Marine barracks was against the U.S. Kidnapping of Americans all over the Middle East, primarily Lebanon during the 1980s and 90s, against the U.S. The Shiites, I mean, ha not to mention the taking of the, of the, uh, of the uh, American embassy in Iran. I mean, this is just, again, ludicrous. Now, you might say there's never been a Shiite attempt on American soil. Well, that's not even true. There was a Shiite attempt on American soil just four or five years ago that was crushed by intelligence, but it was targeted towards the Saudi ambassador, but it was on the U.S. soil. That was an attempt. Maybe it's true that there's never been a successful Shiite terrorist attack on American soil, but that's not what Kyle's saying. He's saying against Americans, which is just blatantly, unequivocally false. From the, the Salafists, the, the Sunni Wahhabist fundamentalists. Who are all inspired by the Shiites. If you read the Salafists, if you actually read bin Laden, if you read... The, the, the ISIS, if you read these people, you will discover that what inspired most of them, what really got recruitment up dramatically, was the 1979 Islamic Revolution in Iran. If it could happen in Iran, it could happen anywhere. And the greatest recruitment to the Salifats, the Sunnis, was the success of the Iranian Revolution, the success of Iranians standing up to America, the failure of America to do anything about them. And yet, no, according to Kyle, these are peace That's where the attacks come from. They don't co guys. come from they Shia. They haven't now, just killed a thousand of their own demonstrators, which is all done by the Islamic God, the, the Quds force, the force that Oh no, they're, they're the good guys. They're apolitical. Because the guy running them was Soleimani, a hero of the left in America today. When Mike Pompeo was pushed on this, because he went on the Sunday shows, they've been doing a, you know, they do a terrible job by and large, those shows do. But there was a little bit of pushback when he was on one of the shows, and the person was like, okay, so you say that, you know, he's, Trump stopped an imminent attack here. There was an attack coming against the homeland. And his response was, no, we have intelligence that he was in the pl the process of planning a plot to Americans in the region. He's always in the process of planning a plot against Americans in the region. Always. That's what Soleimani's done for 40 years. For, no, for 20 years. So look at all, all the Weasley qualifiers they put in there. Uh, yes, by the way, the assassination of, Saudi, of the Saudi ambassador, uh, which, was which was targeted by Iran, which was uh, by the Iranians, um, was going to not, you know, shoot him and, and walk away. It was, it, they were planning to blow up a restaurant in D.C. There would have been many American casualties. That was a planned terrorist attack on the United States soil, planned thwarted by the American intelligence services, the same American intelligence services that uh, uh, Trump and, and other Republicans are calling the evil deep state, but nevertheless were successful in stopping that particular terrorist attack by an Iranian regime. Again, Kyle, you should know this. This is not hard. This is not sophisticated. You can, you can have a show. 200,000 people have watched this video by Kyle. 200,000 minds have been polluted by this dishonesty, just plain falsehood. It's not that, oh my God, he was going to attack some, uh, you know, Americans. It's no threat to the homeland, no plan against the homeland, and we're saying, so um, they said he was going to attack us, and come to find out, even they admit 
when they're pushed just a little bit, there was no attack uh, uh, plot against us. We're right, saying that maybe there was one died that was, was coming bad, in the region, guy. which again, no evidence for. And by the way, not I do not believe that for a second. And the burden of proof is not on me. The burden of proof is on them to show us that, no, he was actually going to do it. Okay. That was a mistake of the administration. They should have never said that. They should have just said, this is a guy with the blood of Americans on his hands. This is a guy responsible for killing Americans. This is a guy crucial to the Iranian regime, which is at war with us. We're taking him out. We took him out. Hooray. Good for America. And then they should have gone on to advocate for regime change, but that's a whole different story. They show the proof. Yep. They don't have any. They don't have They any. absolutely don't have any. Um, now, here's the underreported craziest part. We learned this yesterday, and the Again, U.S. media hasn't touched guy. this Listen at all. This. Um, so, Trita Parsi, who's uh, an expert on Iran, he says the following. Wow, wow, wow. According to the Iraqi Prime Minister, Soleimani was not planning an attack. He was in Iraq. This is where he was killed at the Iraqi airport. He was in Iraq carrying a message to Saudi Arabia on how to reduce Iran-Saudi tensions as part of an Iraqi mediation effort. Now notice, I mean, a bunch of stuff here. One, who cares? Who cares? If he was on such a mission, who says such a mission is good? Why is it good for America? But second, who cares? He's a bad guy. He needs to die. Second, you believe the Iraqi Prime Minister? You believe the Iraqi Prime Minister? You don't believe your own president? Now, there's good reason not to believe Donald Trump or the Secretary of State. But those same reasons are, should suggest that we shouldn't believe the Iraqi Prime Minister either. But he's going to just take his word for it. Proof? You just said, Kyle, the burden of proof is on them. Well, the burden of proof is the Iraqi Prime Minister. Has he provided proof that this is true? No. No, but this is the state of, um, of things in the world in which we live. This is a tweet by Rose McGowan. I guess, I don't know who Rose McGowan is, but some celebrity. She wrote after Soleimani's death, Dear Iran, the USA has disrespected your country, your flag, your people. 52% of us humbly apologize. We want peace with your nation. We are being held hostage by a terrorist regime. We do not know how to escape. Please do not kill us. Hashtag Soleimani. I mean, this is so disgusting. So offensive. That, you know, it's hard even to know what to say about, about this kind of stuff. The, the, there's no accident that people hate the left as much as they do. Because these people on the left, at least, this, this kind of uh, uh, crazy left, is so nutty. It's so anti-American. It's so hateful. We're talking about an Iranian regime they just killed about a thousand people in protests, and the protests were about rising fuel costs. And yet the Iranian regime put snipers on buildings and shot them. Now, as bad as Trump is, and granted, I think he's really, really, really bad, we're not shooting thousands of protesters in the street. Yet, who knows, 20, 30, 40 years from now. But we're not. We're not a terrorist regime. And we're certainly not a terrorist regime when you compare us to Iran. I mean, when you hear people like this, you almost become a supporter of Trump because what's the alternative? These people are truly nuts. Despicable. Evil. And this is... Kyle Kalinske's audience. And this is Kyle, who leads the chorus. Leads the chorus. Now, that doesn't justify Trump <laughs> at all. But it sure puts the context into what the nutty left represents. And it represents pure nihilism, pure hatred of America, that the left couldn't care less about him in American life, but an, or an Iranian life for that matter.
It couldn't care less about individual human life. Well, we know that from the environmentalist nuttiness that they have. They're not interested in human life. I don't know what they are interested in. Well, we know. At the end of the day, they're motivated by hatred and they're motivated by a desire to destroy. I mean, you listen to Kyle, particularly on this topic, you listen to Kyle. And you read those kind of tweets, which, by the way, that tweet was retweeted by dozens of celebrities on the wacky left. They are nuts. As nutty or more so than the nuts on the right. And that's who we have today, those two groups. The nuts on the left and the nuts on the right. No, nuts on the left and nuts on the right. Are growing. Are growing. And, I mean, Kyle in this video, it, it, this is not just ignorance. This is blatant dishonesty. I mean, what we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes using the super chat and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time so I'll do it again maybe we'll get some more today um, if you like what you're hearing if you appreciate what I'm doing then I appreciate your support uh, those of you who don't yet support the show please take this opportunity go to yourronbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com yourronbrookshow and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...